Welcome. So today I will be using this version of the Phoenix Force deck uh, and we will be climbing in ladder. We are starting at a nice even number, 10,700, and we will see where we end after I'm done. Okay, first up we have Andy. My hand is fantastic. They are not a Thanos deck. I will hold off on snapping. Okay, they are a Loki deck. I am going to snap pending this second location. So, I don't like these two locations because I want to play dagger middle, but then I really just don't get my bonus at all from the location. So we're going to snap and just trust that this third unknown location, of course, I don't want to play into Vibranium Mines. We're just going to trust that that third location isn't going to mess me up. And because it's a Loki deck, uh, we know... Uh, okay, don't get destroyed, please. Uh, do I want to play... Yes, because I can play... Uh, I was wondering if I should play Deathlock or Carnage. Then I can play Deathlock into Krakoa, but I can always play Phoenix Force there. Uh, and because it's a Loki deck... Oh, that is uh, bold, playing Elsa into Danger Room. Because it's a Loki deck, uh, they will, in all likelihood, fill up their locations. They're also an Elsa deck. So Dagger should grow. Now, they also run Shang-Chi. So I just need to be aware of that. Ah, nice. Okay, they messed me up with my bonus. Let's see. And I can't play Nimrod into Danger Room. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move Dagger left. They are going to expect me to finish with Dagger right, but we may just abandon that lane. So I'm going to play Dagger here, Nimrod here, And we will see how this plays out. This might end up being a retreat. And if they play Sean here, they're still at 14. If I destroy with Carnage, that puts them at... Four, so that puts me at 11. Okay, nice. I didn't need to run the math. They may not have had their Shang-Chi. Uh, they definitely didn't draw their Loki. They had three cards left in deck. So a good way to start this out. Okay, now we have On the Rocks. This is Grade A Hand. So this is where we make back some of our cubes, assuming they don't leave when I snap now. Or wait, I'm going <gasps> to... I messed up. <laughs> oh, I messed up. Okay, I can still recover. Oh, what a... What a blunder. Uh, I definitely should have played Nico turn one, uh, but that's okay. Uh, no harm, no foul. We can still recover. It wasn't a gr the gravest of errors because we still have Deathlock in hand. But of course, the destroy card I always prefer is Nico. 
All right, and they bounced. Uh, so it didn't really matter, which is okay. The thing is, as I climb, uh, I'm facing better and better players, and snaps convey that you have your winning line. So against really good players, if you snap, they will evaluate their hand and go, okay, do I think I have my winning line? Because my opponent definitely does. And if they don't, then they'll leave. So next up is Japoy. This deck isn't a fan of Crim Crimson Cosmos. I have a lot of small destroy cards. Okay, I have Shuri Nimrod. I can't use all my energy this turn, so we'll just continue to skip. I'll let their Red Hulk grow. Shadowland is okay. All right, what am I going to do? I think we're going to skip one more turn. We have Ghost Spider in hand. So their Red Hulk will probably be, probably be capped at 23 because I can fill the rest of my curve. They will play Red Hulk in the Crimson Cosmos. I can put 24 there with two Nimrods. That is what we will do. If I also draw into Sean, I could Carnage and then Sean that Crimson Cosmos lane uh, if I don't have priority. So we will just have to see. I have two destroy cards. I really would love Venom to be able to lock in power somewhere. Uh, I was seeing how many cards I have in my deck. So they have two extra energy. They do have priority. So what lane do I want to throw? They can get 26 power here. And so I just can't... I can't compete with that. And I also can't throw that lane. This is this isn't a good stay, but I th I think I'm gonna stay. So I can get this out of here. I can get the silk to move, but it would be low power. So I'm going to slow down time here to better explain why I stayed. I just couldn't enunciate it. If I play my last destroy card mid, Silk pops either left or right. So I want to stack as much power as I can right. I am throwing left and that's fine if they play Red Hulk. Because if I pop Silk out left, which she presumably will go, then I win mid with the 5 from Deathlock or the 4 from Carnage, even though it's low power. So that is why I stayed here. It's a good stay against Red Hulk. I just didn't realize it uh, fully at the time and why I described it as going with my gut. So I need to throw a lane, and I don't know which lane to throw. So I'll just play by my gut. We will play Ghost Spider here just in case they uh, they do something weird. And we'll play the Deathlock here. It's going to bounce over here. We'll play this out. Oh, did I win? Venom? Oh. I think I won. Yeah, 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 I did. Good. I'm glad I, uh... 
I'm glad I stuck with this one out. They didn't go with the Red Hulk. We threw middle. This worked out very nicely. Uh, this New York location is uh, anxiety inducing for both players. So sometimes you have to roll the dice. Uh, and especially with Red Hulk, a lot of these good Red Hulk players, because I can see the Red Hulk growing and growing and growing. They they may think, okay, my opponent sees this large Red Hulk. This is what he expects. He expects a large Red Hulk. So I'm going to pivot and play two smaller cards. And I'm going to do that because in this case, I have Sean. So I'm going to mess up their Nimrod destroy. Because they definitely want to destroy Nimrod, I'm going to uh, disrupt that. But with double destroy, a lot of times it doesn't matter because Sean is such low power that as long as I get another destroy, you see, they ended this lane with 10 power. That's not a lot. And that's another thing to point out uh, when playing this deck with your other winning lines. You see their final scores across these lanes they have seven eight and ten when people are looking at decks and sometimes they'll look at my deck and go okay so you have dagger in your deck uh how do you win other lanes so i only need nine power in this lane or eight power in this lane or less if I would have would have played in this lane and Silk bounces back out. So you will play a fair amount of games where you don't need, where you only need double digit power in a lane to win. And so that's this game. I needed 11 points max in this lane and then nine in the middle and eight left. So it was risky because I knew they had Red Hulk, and if they had just played Red Hulk here, I potentially could have lost. Because then they would have needed they would have needed to blank this lane unless they had a one cost or a two cost? A two cost. Because I think they played two cards on hope for two extra power. So they would needed a two cost here. And a two cost here, honestly isn't going to be eight power to tie. And so they win the tiebreaker. So that is probably the, the calculus they were running. Uh, there were ways they could have won. Uh, so maybe this was a better stay than I thought it was. Uh, but there you go. The full analysis. Okay, now we have Vi Large an okay starting hand. No Thanos. Okay, so with this hand, I usually like to play the move card into Strange Academy to to prolong them knowing, my opponent knowing whether I am a normal move deck or a Phoenix deck. Because normal move decks definitely want to play in the Strange Academy. That is hilarious. I could have used the Phoenix Force. Okay, so I am pivoting. Uh, multiple man will just be another three power somewhere else. Maybe that'll help me gain priority. Uh, but I definitely want to play, go with my Shuri line because that is what I have in hand. I am going to snap. This is probably, whenever I see Ravona, uh oh, they snap back. This may be a uh, negative player. And they're about to play negative. Oh, they thought they were countering me. Got it. Okay, uh, what deck is this with armor in here? Is it Living Tribunal? Hella? 
Hmm. So I'm going to play Shuri over here. I have Ghost Spider, so if armor uh, covers up my Nimrod, I'm fine. But I would like priority. Oh, this is hilarious. So I'm definitely going to have a free... Is this Spectrum? This might be a Spectrum deck. And I should have priority. So I can't do double destroy. So it's just going to have to be... Ay, ay, ay. Well, no, that's fine too. <laughs> this, they had all of the counters. They had all of the counters. Hilarious. So uh, I have to use Ghost Spider for the Nimrod. So if they have Spectrum, pull this here. I need to leave a space. This is multiple man's getting in my way. Because I'm only going to have five here. I'll have 12 mid. I think I win mid. So two, four, six, eight, 22. And 19, so uh, I'm not going to win. If they have Spectrum, I don't win. How much energy do I have left? I'm playing around spectr uh, Spectrum. Spectrum. <laughs> okay uh they did the retreat later yeah fantastic uh i had priority it was this game came down to a decision of if they have spectrum and they might not have drawn spectrum uh which is why they retreated uh so my play right here is playing around spectrum because Spectrum, I would fully expect them to play Spectrum left. So if I had Eliath, which is why Eliath is in the deck, I could play Eliath left. But if for some reason they played Spectrum mid, I, I lose mid. But if I do Ghost Spider to pull my Nimrod mid. Yes, I throw right, but I'm expecting the Spectrum play. I cannot beat the Spectrum play over here because they have one, two, three, four ongoing cards. Iron Lad is Cosmo. So that's plus eight. So they'd be up to 22. And this is at 16 now. It stays at 16. And then if I play a multiple man or this multiple man here, I just go up to 19. And that always loses to a Spectrum play. If they play Spectrum mid, that's 7 plus 2 Mystique, that's 9. So by pulling my Nimrod mid, that beats the Spectrum play mid, and I win outright left. If they play Spectrum left, I've pulled my Ghost Spider, i pulled Nimrod mid with Ghost Spider. Mystique only goes to a 2. That easily wins this lane. Spectrum is a 7, so I have got to get 8 power over here. So I get 8, 9, 10 power. Because Nico is on her destroy spell, I have to play her last, which is no problem. So because I'm expecting the Spectrum play, that is why I pivoted. Instead of pulling Ghost Spider left and playing Deathlock, because if I did that... And then I would be able to play multiple man. Deathlock is five points here. And that loses to a Spectrum play. Now, ideally, this multiple man wouldn't be here. But then again, neither would this one. So I would be down. I would be losing 13 in this lane. So 
in that case, I probably would have pulled... I would have used Ghost Spider here. I would have ended up losing this lane. But I would have played Deathlock and Multiple Man left to get up to 8 power, which beats Spectrum. So there were there were a couple of different plays if Multiple Man hadn't gotten my way. But honestly, maybe that was a blessing in disguise. It made me realize uh, just shifting the Nimrod's power, I don't need to destroy him. Uh, and just getting above a Spectrum 7 here is, was the play. Did we break 10,000? Nice. Officially a top 10,000 player. Okay, we are up against Pros Pros Historian. Wow, what a fantastic hand. Not a Thanos deck. We will turn one snap this. Okay, possibly a junk deck, so we want to be very aware of our space. Crimson Cosmos is, isn't is great sometimes for this deck, but other times uh, it actually works out. Okay, so this is the Pixie junk deck. So we will hold on to Carnage because it's less power. And I, I would love to hold on to both De Deathlock and Carnage. Multiple men in a murder world would have been fantastic. But alas, we cannot do that. So we get our destroy off without a hitch. Is this Mysterio? Perfect. Thank you, Nico, for saving me. Nope, just a lot of low-cost cards. Okay, we play Phoenix Force mid. You always, always, always play Phoenix Force in the Crimson Cosmos. If for some reason this lunatic I'm playing is running Cosmo, Cosmo cannot be played in the Crimson Cosmos. Your Phoenix Force will go off without a hitch. Perfect. So we... We have priority. I have Sean for the century. I would like to draw Ghost Spider. Thank you. We will. We're going to do a little bit of a fake out. So I play multiple man here. Phoenix Force here, and Shuri right here. Because what that is going to allow me to do is throw off the scent of what I'm actually going to do by playing the Shuri. Shuri is just a decoy. I want a Sean mid. Uh, so that's my play. Sean mid and then Carnage right. We will see if they play their Annihilus this turn or next turn, but I don't think it really matters. And then again, we can just drag our multiple men wherever we want. So, uh, Eliath doesn't scare me. Okay, so I have priority going into this turn. So... Uh, this is a pixie deck, so ultimately they can do all kinds of nonsense. But we will drag two multiple men right just to stop the void. Uh, I kind of hate doing that, but uh, what can you do? Or do I just draw one? I just do one, and then I can play the pig to block it, and that should be more than enough power. So this should be more than enough power to win. Uh, right. 
I drag multiple man over here. That should be more than enough power to win left. And then I drag another multiple man mid and play Sean last for the cherry on top. Victory. They retreated later. Smart move. All right, so couldn't break 10,000 for the session. Uh, we gained 500 ranks or 400 some ranks. So decent success. Uh, and hopefully that showed you a good way of how to pilot the deck. Uh, I started, I've been playing off stream. I started my climb at 30,000. This is the only deck I've been using and I have climbed up to, as you saw, I think it was 10,200 something uh, with just this single deck. So it's very powerful. You just have to manage your cubes, manage your snaps and retreats, and manage how often you're staying into games. Uh, and this deck is very usable. Uh, we didn't get any cool lines with Eliath this game, but I've definitely gotten them against uh, uh, Annihilus decks, I've gotten them against Destroy decks where I uh, tag their null. Uh, so, so yeah, this deck is pretty powerful and cool, and uh, I highly recommend it. Alrighty, you all. Until next time.